Good morning and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after the day of Pentecost. And in the season of green, as I, I live in Kyle, Saskatchewan, and as I drove in this morning, the river hills are just gorgeous. The, the, the water on the river was pretty calm. It was, there was a little bit of ripple, but it was, and then the, the mosaic of the green and the, the trees and the grass and the hills, it was just absolutely gorgeous. And then just as we're kind of coming over the hill and seeing kind of that beautiful picture of the river and the hills, there's a mother deer and two little fawns on the side of the road and I just oh they were just so beautiful and I just I said to Dennis we we should just stop but there wasn't time for that work was calling so but wonderful to be here on this glorious uh, summer day Uh, we have all experienced something in this pandemic time where it it just went wow another disruption in our lives. We have some beautiful flowers before us this morning as we gather for worship. And they, I had a, this past Monday, we celebrated the lives of Don and Barb Adam. And Don's brother Dave in the U.S. had said that he would like to send some flowers. And I said, that would be wonderful. And then he got a message from the floor saying that they, the product, the flowers weren't in, and so they wouldn't be able to do that. And so we were very sad about that. And then on Tuesday morning, I got a phone call from the florist saying, there's flowers here for you, ready to be delivered. So give thanks that they're here now, and thank you to, to the family of Don and Barb for the, the wonderful memory that these flowers bring to us and the joy as we remember Don and Barb's life. So give thanks for that. So we gather together now in this time of confession and forgiveness as we we bow before our Lord and confess those sins and know that we will be forgiven and are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority alone, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering him this day baptized and set free.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen and we turn our ears to the scriptures. The first reading is from Genesis 22, verses 1 to 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. 
So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out, and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Therefore do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is satisfaction. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Join our voices together for the gospel acclamation. according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. 
Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of water, cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If there are any little people in your home, I invite you to gather them around the screen where you are gathered and we'll uh, spend a little bit of time together. So the weather is finally warm and it's finally sunshine and, and the province is opening up and reducing the restrictions a little bit and so I bet all of you are outside a whole bunch of the time doing all kinds of fun things, still keeping your distance from your, from your friends, but still able to play in the same area. I saw just the play park just down from the church here on yesterday was just filled with kids having so much fun. It's so great to hear your laughter and your joy once again. So when you get up in the morning and you get on your clothes, probably your shorts and your t-shirt and your sandals, and you go out the door, do you take anything with you when you go? Sometimes I do, and I'll maybe, I got a, brought a few things here that I sometimes take with me. These are, what do they look like? They're, they're my garden gloves. And so when I take them out and I put them on, when I leave my house, I'm going out with a purpose. Where do you suppose I'm going? I'm going to go to my garden and I'm going to pull some weeds because they don't ever give up. And I'm, I'm just going to go outside and work in the yard. And every once in a while I see my neighbor out there working in her yard. And so I go over and we, we visit while we pull her weeds together. So I go over and I spend some time with my neighbor sometimes. What if you were leaving the house with this? I don't know if you recognize what it is. It's a bingo dabber. Why does a pastor have a bingo dabber? I will never tell. But I, sometimes I take the bingo dabber with me. And where do you suppose I might be going if I was taking my bingo dabber? Well, maybe you have a grandma or an auntie or an uncle who likes to play bingo. And now that you can, we can be with a few more people, maybe you'll go over and have a game of bingo with your grandma and brighten her day. And I know my grandma always had prizes. Oftentimes it was chocolate bars. So I like to play bingo with my grandma. Or maybe I'm leaving the house with this. This one is often later in the day. As I said at the beginning of the service, I live in Kyle, and so we have the Clearwater Drive-In out in Kyle, just not too far from where I live and not too far from my cabin. So, and right now, they've kind of got the concession open, but they encourage you to bring your own stuff along. So when we go to the drive-in movie, I always pop popcorn so we can have a treat in the car. So I've, And we usually, I usually pop a bunch and then we'll go with friends and so we'll share between our cars. We put it out of the door and then somebody else from their car comes and walks over and picks it up and takes it to theirs. So we're we're keeping that social distancing. But yeah, I I have to think about this before I leave the house. Did I remember my popcorn if we're going to the drive-in movie? One other little thing that I brought along. I can't do this, but you're supposed to bounce it against that. I have to do it this way because I don't have any other way I yeah see doesn't work but what if you left the house with this what do you suppose you might be doing maybe going to find your friends and play a game on the sidewalk or or maybe your mom is sending you out with your little brother to or little sister to go outside and play and kind of watch out for each other when we get up in the morning and put on our shorts and our t-shirt and our sandals and we go out the door We've got something in mind. We've got something in mind about what we're going to do. And we, when we encounter people, if, if I've got my popcorn and I encounter one of my friends, do you want some popcorn? So we reach out to each other. In the gospel text that I just read, Jesus says, when you offer a cu- cup of cold water, you give it to Christ. You welcome Christ into your life. And so when we go out and we, we encounter people and we do these things for, for other people, we've got a purpose and intention in our lives. And that cup of cold water, I love that illustration that Jesus uses because it takes us back 
to the font. Hopefully the water was warm when you were baptized, but it takes us back to the water where we are given a purpose. We are given a purpose and an intent in our lives where we are to go out and proclaim Christ. We're to go out and, and welcome other people into Christ. And as I'll talk about in my sermon, people see Christ in us by those little acts of kindness, the cup of cold water, the popcorn, going to play bingo with grandma, helping your neighbor. Maybe it's Maybe you sweep the sidewalk for somebody who can't do it, or maybe in the wintertime shovel the sidewalk. All of those ways that we reach out and care for one another. I brought one final thing with me that I just want to... Sh- I think it's important for, uh, for us to think about this now that we're starting to go out a little bit more. It's a mask. And we, we put our masks on when we go out to be with other people if we know we're going to go to the grocery store or out to the play park or whatever, not, not because, it, well, it's a pain, but we do it because we care for one another. We want to welcome other people into our lives, so we, we take care by wearing a mask when we go out so we can protect each other. All of those are ways that we welcome, welcome each other, and as we welcome each other and encounter each other and care for one another, Christ is seen in us, and we receive Christ back from our friends as they do the same for us. So thank you, children, for all the ways that you now bring that joy and laughter into our lives and for all the ways that you so innocently and so kindly care for us and and brighten our lives. So let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have chosen us as your children, that you welcome us into the kingdom of God, and that we in turn are able, because of the love you have for us, to welcome others by the kind acts that we do. Thank you for the gift of these children and for all the ways that they bless us and bring us joy. In your name we pray. Amen. So you'll be glad to know this is the final week we will be in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. We can move on now to the next chapter. But this, this, we've been now in the last three, this is the third week that we've been in that 10th chapter of, of Matthew's Gospel. And it, it's really Jesus' commissioning speech. He's been preparing the disciples to be sent out, to go out and do what Jesus has been doing and teaching them. And so he's, these last three verses are that commissioning, that this is how you're going to do this. You're going to go out and do this. So... Um, the last words that they'll hear before they go out on their mission journeys. So I want to tell you a couple of stories this morning. Let's start with the disciples first. So just imagine those disciples. Here's a group of guys. There really weren't much to write home about. Most of them had worked down at the docks all of their lives. One of them had gone door to door collecting taxes. And one of them, well, no one was quite sure if they could entirely trust him. But they had gone to school, and at some point, it was clear that they were better off leaving school and getting a job and making a living. So that's what they did. They fished, and they collected money, and each day was a lot like the day before. Until, until one day this man came to see them. They'd heard about him. He'd been hanging around town, and he certainly caught their attention. He talked about things in a different way. He gave people hope about the future. But this man, for some reason, he came to see them. And it's as if he knew them already. He just looked at them and said, follow me. Because this man, he saw something in each of them, something that others might have missed, something that they themselves might have not even realized. He saw in them the potential of what each of them could be. He saw them not for who they were at that exact moment, but for who they would become. So much so that he gathered this group of men. He taught them everything they could take in. He healed, he preached, he performed miracles. He showed them a worldview they had never seen before. And he talked about hope. And in a way that they hadn't even heard before. And if that wasn't enough, amidst all the miracles and teaching and instruction, he made the audacious, audacious decision to actually commission this group 
to go out and do the same things he was doing. To teach, to heal, to share the good news, and to do so with authority. He told them how hard it would be. He told them that it would mean leaving much of their old life behind. But he also told them, you can do this. He gave their lives a purpose. He gave their lives a new meaning and he helped them to see what they could become set on this new path. And when they did, we hear the words that we heard today, that when people received them on their journey into their homes, that people actually would be receiving Jesus. That in essence, they would be Christ to those people. That when people met them, saw them, received them, they would meet and see and receive Christ. And this ragtag group of disciples said, yeah, I think we could do that. And they changed the future of the world. There's another story of a young man that I met many years ago. He was the oldest of five children. His mother, a single mom, didn't have much, but she did love those kids. They didn't grow up with a lot of money or resources. And the young man went to school and he struggled. He didn't like reading, he just didn't get it. He often found himself in trouble and staying focused on school and his future was the last thing on his mind. But then there came a person who saw something different in this young man, something that others might have missed, something that this young man might not have even realized. This person saw potential for what he could be. This person saw him not who he was at that exact moment, but rather for what he would become. And things began to change. Reading still wasn't easy, but it did get better. With a lot of hard work and the help of this person and others who believed in him, he went to college and began to discover a different trajectory for his life. Along this journey, his faith in Jesus was reawakened and through all the hardships began to understand a greater purpose for his own life and what he could do. Not only does he now read for pleasure, but he has changed the lives of many young people similar to himself as he works at an inner city school in Vancouver. And in the summer, he works as a guide in outback summer camps for troubled youth, helping them to see something different in themselves and that they can achieve their goals even when it's hard and no one sees the future in them that God sees. Each day of the summer, there is an opportunity for campers through the love and care of this young man to see Jesus in him. And because this young man said yes many years ago, the lives of many young people have been changed forever. Maybe there hasn't been a person in your life that's told you that they see things in you that others have missed. And maybe there hasn't been a moment when you felt a person or even the Spirit of God telling you that, that the purpose for which you were created is so much bigger than you might have ever imagined. If that's true, then I want to say to each of you, every single one of us is born into this world with a unique and beautiful creation of God ready to bring forth incredible things, things only you can do. That is the very kind of creative work that God is all about. And for those of us who know that or have known that about ourselves, I think it's safe to say that we probably need to be reminded about this. We need to be reminded that we are created with love and purpose because the truth is that things really get hard sometimes. We get bogged down with details and the annoying frustrations of life. And some days we face challenges that seem insurmountable and we just can't see to the other side. And so we need to be reminded to keep moving forward, to keep believing that God has created us to do good and beautiful, tiny and tremendous things in this world. The things we do each day and the work we do is for the glory of God. And we need to be reminded of that. As I, I prepared for this text or this sermon, I, I pondered a question that I thought about, and, and, and maybe it's come up many times over the course of years, but I thought, wouldn't it have been so much easier if we all could have just met Jesus? Wouldn't that may, have made life so much easier if we'd have been able to walk with him like those disciples and, and learn from him as they did? 
And I, over the years, I've thought about it a lot. And as I said, it came up again as I was preparing for this, this sermon. But I think that question is actually kind of a bit of a cop-out. <laughs> because the truth is, I have met Jesus in person. I've met Jesus in my grandmother, in my father, in my Sunday school teacher, my friend, a woman I met walking around the lake. I've met Jesus in you. I've met Jesus in persons all over the place and all throughout my life. Countless people who have reflected back to me the love and truth of God. When I looked at them, I saw Jesus. When I received them, I received God. And that's us. That's our call. That offer of that cup of cold water. A gesture so small, so simple, and yet so huge. Like all small acts of devotion, tenderness, and forgiveness that go largely unnoticed, but do so much to strengthen the relationships that are important to us, that the life of faith is also made up of many small gestures. Small acts of welcome, make, like making a phone call to ask how a friend is doing, dropping off groceries for the elderly, reaching out to the lonely and most vulnerable among us. According to Jesus, though, I think, there is no small gesture, no small act of welcome. A cup of cold water is the smallest of gifts, a gift that almost anyone can give. But that cup of cold water is so precious to a person who is really thirsty, and maybe thirsty as in I need a drink of water, but or thirsty for someone to care, someone to notice, someone to be there for them. The act of welcoming another is a deed done on purpose. God sees in us the image of God's self in which we were created. And God sees in us the heart of God. And God's heart welcomes all the little ones. When poet and playwright Oscar Wilde was sent to prison in 1895, it was the ultimate humiliation for him. In his day, he was a real celebrity, but all that evaporated once he was convicted. Whenever the prison authorities moved him in public, he was spat at and jeered. On one occasion, when the crowd was particularly hostile, a friend of Wilde's appeared and made a simple gesture of friendship and respect that silenced the crowd. What was that simple gesture? As Wilde passed by, handcuffed and looking down at the ground, the man simply raised his hat to him the smallest of good deeds. Later, Wilde wrote, the memory of that lowly, silent act of love has unsealed thee from all the wells of pity, made the desert blossom like a rose, and brought me out of the bitterness of lonely exile into harmony with the wounded, broken, and great heart of the world. The smallest gesture of welcome a little thing done in love, and maybe not even realizing that you're doing it. The cup of cold water is a symbol of that. It doesn't take much to be hospitable, welcoming, and accepting of, other, of the other. A cup of cold water replicated in a host of other simple, small welcomes. And Jesus tells us that every single one of those small deeds is important, even eternally significant. It doesn't take much. Every one of us can achieve these things, and every one of us can and does make a difference. We can find God in the smallest acts of welcome. We both give and receive. So as you think about your words and your comings and goings this next week, I leave you with the question, who will meet Jesus this week in you? Who will see you, see you this week and also see God? Maybe through something you say or not say. Maybe the time you take to listen. Maybe the care you offer someone right at the moment they need it. Who is it that will see Christ in you this week? And who will be Christ to you right where you are in the places where you find yourself? Who will see God in you and in whom will you see God? Open our eyes, Lord that we would welcome you in ourselves and in others. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Our worship continues as we sing our hymn of the day, All Are Welcome. together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. We hold in prayer our partners in ministry at First United Church. Bless them as they seek to share your love in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you made your, make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. We give you thanks for the rains that have come to nourish the earth. Give farmers and gardeners strength for their work and hope for the harvest. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. We are thankful for the refugee families in Swift Current who have welcomed us into their lives and brought us a new understanding of the mosaic of your creation. Open our eyes and hearts to see you in every person, no matter color, religion, political stripe, ethnicity, or gender. Help us to offer a cup of cold water that all would be welcome to see you in each other. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. And we pray especially for Ted Reeves, Connie Angel, Wayne and Norba Erickson, Martha Rooney, Helen McGovern, Deanne Larson, Ruby Martinson, Sammy Khalif, Lori Dombrowski, Doris Linnis, Burnett Olson, Rose Poe, Margaret Dick, Jean White, Carl Sunquist, Ellie Moe, Ed and Edna Hapke, Evelyn Semp, Lily Semp, Debbie Lind, Alfred Nordahl, Martha Weinbender, Jean Garthus, Jenny Fontaine, Marion Solberg, Margaret Elias. In this time of isolation, anxiety, and financial stress, we pray for our mental health. Give courage to those who are struggling that we would seek out help. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial, and renew the spirits of all who call on you. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and vision to recognize where you are leading us. Help us to embrace whatever changes lie in our future as we come through this pandemic, knowing you are present with us in our worship, in our homes, in our work, and in our play. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of life and love, we give you thanks for the breath of life you gave to us on the day we were born. We celebrate with those who enjoyed their birthdays this past week. Kay Doan, Gordon Souter, Sharon Lang, Jared Steinley, Taylor Slusar, Deanna Gooding, Connor Duplo, and Emily Shirt Chirpin. With joy, we lift up those who celebrated the anniversary of their wedding this past week. Jason and Diane Sletton, Lee and Melina Poppy, Scott and Cynthia Lenz, and Randy and Laurel Dick. May the upcoming year be filled with many blessings. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of comfort, we pray for the families whose loved ones were involved in the accident near Waldeck. Console those whose loved ones were killed and give hope to the families of those who were injured. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died, <clears throat> Dawn and Barb Adam, Francis Wagner, Cameron Bros, and Nora Strum, whose lives of faith and love we celebrated this past week as friends and family gathered for their funerals. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And And also also with you. And we share in the canticle of thanksgiving. pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. We share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to lift up your heads and hearts and receive the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I don't know that there's a whole bunch of announcements. I know that Connie has been working on the newsletter, so it's planned to go out this next week, early in the week. So if you've got anything that needs to be in there, please call the office right away and and we'll try and get it in there if we can. Um, Pastor Greg is gone for one more week, so we will gather again next week and uh, share in worship at 10.30 in the morning on on Sunday morning. So give thanks for that and for all of the ways that... uh, your, your prayers and your support and just your tuning in is, is bringing forth the glory of God. So give thanks for all of you out there who are continuing to offer cups of cold water and uh, smiles and all kinds of other gestures, maybe even some popcorn. That would be all right too. So give thanks for your presence. Our sending hymn this day, give to our God immortal praise.
Go forth in the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.